All right, well, um, welcome everybody to session three. Um, just to gauge where you are, we're halfway through the workshop. Um, so don't panic. And uh, I know there are some um, issues that are coming up with the paintings where um, you may not be as happy. You're kind of at that awkward stage in a painting where you, you have got the groundwork roughed in, but the next step is where it's going to start to come together. So today what the plan is, is we're going to really work on using glazing and some sponge work for the leaves and some lifting to correct uh, what I'm noticing with that shoreline along the left hand side of the painting. We're going to address all of those things today and then anything else that you have that isn't, uh, you know, working for you, we, we can work on that together. Um, so that, that's the, uh, the idea today or the, the plan. Um, with this painting, I really want you to think about how we're using this light that's in the painting to create a focal point, kind of the center of interest. And that's what we're going to really try to um, pull together today to kind of get the viewer of your painting to focus on this center of interest. Um, so we'll, we'll, we'll use some techniques in art. Uh, one of them is to frame your painting. You know, we'll, we'll use some shadows in this lower left corner. We'll use some foliage in the upper left corner and really all around this glow. And then we'll get some texture, some, you know, cattails and um, foliage down here on the lower right, as well as glazing, just using layers, thin layers of transparent watercolor to kind of draw the viewer in to create this uh, focal point or this glow. So that we'll work on that today. Um, I lived with my painting this week, uh, set it up in the living room and just looked at, you know, not, not constantly, but pretty much <laughs> look at it and, and see, you know, this is what I like about it, but these are some things that I don't like about it. And so uh, we'll go around the room. If you have any, um, if you'd like to share where you're at with your painting, even if you didn't work on it, that's fine. I'd love for you to critique. Um, and if there are questions that you have, um, materials, techniques, uh, just w you know, where are we going with this? Bring bring those questions up, and I will do my best to address those. And then, if you have any tips or raves, uh, please share those. So I'm gonna I'll start um, because I wanted to share this painting that I brought in last week. I finished it up and got it framed or popped it in a frame. So um, this was just a, a fairly quick. Uh, watercolor a little bit looser than I usually work and you know I didn't fret over it a whole bunch and I tried to force myself to say stop <laughs> so that sometimes that's that's an important uh, thing to do now I did use the uh, the mat to crop quite a bit especially off of this side of the painting and so if you're working with a pre-cut mat or any mat uh, whether you it's pre-cut or not you can place that on your work and kind of decide where you want to crop or where you want to emphasize and save. So, um, you know, you use the mat to kind of uh, guide how, you know, you could change, for example, I didn't want this line to be right in the center of the painting. So you can change that by adjusting where the mat uh, is placed. So that's my critique. And my tip for today is if you have a, a curious house cat, don't leave natural sponges around the house. <laughs> That's what I learned this week. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> because the, the cat took my favorite sponge and reduced it by about half. Oh. So anyway, I still have it, but it's, it's not as big as it once was. Oh, I don't even leave my painting out because I have four cats, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they, they will check They're everything curious. out. <laughs> So we'll, we'll uh, give you a chance to critique uh, and share or ask any questions, and then we'll hop into today's lessons. We're on to the, let me see if I can get this math right. We put in 90% of our time to get halfway there. So now we'll put in, no, I messed it up. We put in half our time to get 90% right. I, I need to write this down. No, I'm confused. What is it? It's... You know, it, what I'm trying to say is the initial part where you kind of lay in mm -hmm. the background and you get to this point, that takes about half of your time, but you have the majority of the painting blocked in. Now you spend the other half of the time getting into the details. Uh, and so, mm -hmm. um, 
Yeah. That's kind of what I'm trying to say. Oh, okay. All right, so the, this is what I felt about my um, composition and my painting as I looked at it this week. I'm not happy with this peninsula or this section of land. This is the shore on the north side of the river down on the east end mm -hmm. when you, you um, hike down in there. So this is basically there's some fields and cattle and stuff over here and then lots of big cottonwood trees. And so when we drew this, and I suggested to draw that line here, um, I made the line wider. And what that does is it makes the land, first of all, it makes it look like you're higher up and you're looking a little bit down on this, which, you know, is okay, but it, it, um, it brings it closer to you. And I want to push it away. I want to make it, this is the distance and this is closer. So in looking at this, a couple of things came to mind. One was to kind of curve the shoreline or the edge of where the water meets the land and so kind of eliminate some of this land area and what I can do with that is create the reflection in the water and that so that's kind of what I'm going to do I'm not sure if I'll do quite that much the other thing that I notice is there's a little peninsula of land that I kind of roughed in roughly here Ooh, like a little island or uh, just a little jet Oh, jetty or a little a yeah a little you know crag yeah. along the shoreline mm -hmm. um, because I'm going to be moving this up that won't really work but I could still achieve that hmm. by putting a little section of land that's a little bit closer in there so that that's not a big deal but I want to get rid of some of this land mass here so I'll do that first um, the other thing that we'll be doing today and again this this could change quite a quite a lot with the look of this but we'll glaze over some color and we'll use the sponge work to kind of rough in uh, the leaves on the trees mm -hmm. and you can always go back and do more branches i'm sure i'm going to want more branches uh, one other thing that i that bothered me about this is the similarity in size of these two parts of the tree so i'm going to make this one bigger mm -hmm. just to balance it look too even to perfectly balance. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of what I'm going to start with. So I'm going to lift a little bit. Mm -hmm. And what I want to lift is this darkest color. Mm -hmm. I wasn't really happy with that green anyway. So what I'm doing is just using a cheap stiff bristled brush and I'm kind of scrubbing a little bit. Put my water a little closer here. And so when you're lifting, you know, if you just uh, use that cheaper, stiff bristled brush, give the water a little bit of time to do its work, hmm. and then just take a tissue. Hmm. And start lifting. Hmm. If, you, if you use good materials, you know, better paper and better paints, it, this will work. So that, that lifted quite a bit of it. I might do a little bit with this rusty color here to just lift a little bit more of this off. And the reason you're doing this again is... I'm going to sort of move my shoreline back here, Kathleen. So mm -hmm. I, And I think it was too dark and I wasn't happy with the green. Oh, um, I oh. didn't really have a lot of green in the trees. So oh, yeah. I don't know. It was just a feeling that I wasn't liking. Mm -hmm. Wasn't liking what... Oh, wasn't this. liking what was happening there. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. Right here is still a little dark, so I'm just going to lift it again. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is go ahead and get my better brushes. Mm -hmm. This one is probably a 12. It's kind of rubbed off all the... ID stuff, but uh, this is a sable. It's a mm -hmm. expensive, nice uh, wash brush. And I think this is the Dick Blick brand. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and just pick up some of these kind of colors. So um, this is quinacridone gold. I know I'll be using a lot of that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is this Venetian red, which mm. I'm pretty sure I'll be using quite a bit of that also. Mm -hmm. um, let's get some brown. So I've got some Van Dyke brown. Ken, if we don't have Venetian red, what can we use? Um, you could mix that, Val, with, you could probably mix it with red and brown, or the other thing that might work, a nice color to work with is uh, go with Payne's Gray. 
Let's put some of this out and get some red. So I've got, uh, what have I got here? Yeah, this is uh, yeah. rose matter. Oh, rose matter. Yeah, so try some rose matter. This will g may give you a little bit of a purplish color. Ooh. Let's try Ooh, that. That's pretty. Yeah, that does create purple because Payne's gray is loaded with blue. So blue and red will give you purple. Mm -hmm. Now come over and get a little bit of uh, yellow ochre. Mm -hmm. So if you think about that, what we're doing here is we're mixing all three primaries. So we've got yellow, red, and blue basically together, which will give you an earthy color. So that that's pretty close to Venetian or Tuscan red there. That's pretty good. Mm -hmm. that's yeah, pretty so good. that was, if you think about mm -hmm. it, you know, you're mixing the three, some mm -hmm. form of all three primary colors, which gives you a muddy color, but it can also achieve what you want by how much, um, you know, very little of the blue, more of the yellow and the red. So that was blue, uh, red, and yellow. Yep. Yeah, so it's yellow ochre, mm -hmm. um, rose matter, mm -hmm. and the the Payne's gray is a very blue-based uh, color. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's mm -hmm. going to work for us, so let's go ahead and... So if uh, Payne's gray is kind of dark blue, what is indigo? Is it a blue? Indigo is the darkest hue of blue, yes. Oh, it's, okay. It is blue. Uh-huh, all right. So, Belle, thank you for that suggestion, because that's what I'm going to use is that mixture. Mm -hmm. So we'll just go with uh, those three. All right, so I'm going to move this up. I'm just going to get some pigment on here. So because I scrubbed that off... Um, you know, as I work with this brush, it's kind of uh, lifting that up a little bit. So this may take a couple of coats, and that's okay. I'll just layer on this paint. And I'm working wet on wet now because the paper's getting uh, soaked with the, the pigment and the water that's in it. And then I'll just layer some more in. Now I want to keep this lighter back here. So while it's yeah. nice and wet, I'll just kind of lift that up. And I'm going to pick up a little bit of brown. <clears throat> and brown with Payne's gray is a really rich, dark color. So right along the shoreline, let me get a smaller brush. Oops. So Payne's gray, some of that rose matter, maybe a little bit of brown. So I, I sort of want to emphasize under the bank, along the edge of the, the shoreline. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and grab a bigger brush now. This is the one inch uh, silver black velvet wash brush. And I want, I want this to be more interesting down here. So I'm going to go ahead and wet this. Now, I want to retain the white over here, so I don't want to do much glazing or adding of color over there. But down here, I do want to go darker in the corner to kind of frame this painting. So I'm going to go ahead and pick up some blue now. So this is cerulean. And then maybe a touch of, this is ultramarine. If you don't have ultramarine, um, like uh, Prussian blue would work well. And I'm just going to go ahead and lay in some blue down here in the corner. I want it to be a little darker, so I'm adding a little indigo. And this will sort of reflect your clouds and frame your painting. So I'm going to get this nice and wet. And I want to save some of that white to kind of give the idea that there's some clouds reflecting in the water. So kind of uh, reserve that. There we go. All right, so I'm going to drop in some more um, of this indigo blue and cerulean. Mm -hmm. And this is where you just kind of give up the control and let the wash kind of do its thing. You can use gravity 
and just do a controlled wash here. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then I'm going to let that work its magic, and in the meantime, I'm going to come back up here and get this dark edge a little bit more defined. So I'm back into burnt umber. Any brown will work, and I'm going to add a little bit more of that Payne's gray mm. to give me a really rich dark color. Mm. And I'm going to put a lot of pigment, a lot of color into this. And remember that watercolors will lighten as they dry. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just the fact that that line has been moved up to me has already made a difference. It pushes mm -hmm. that back. It's not mm -hmm. such a, you know, it was just getting too big and too close to the, to the um, focal point. It wasn't really what I wanted, so that made a difference. Mm -hmm. Now you can use um, pure water when you're lifting. You can also use color. So this, this is quinacridone gold, and what I want to show you is that you can layer in color, but you can also scrub it and lift back. Um, so as that sets there, I'm going to go ahead and take a stiff bristled brush again. And I've kind of got these little, I was trying to show the shape of the cottonwood trees. This but looks like a duck. <laughs> yeah, it does. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it does. <laughs> So do you, I'm not sure if that makes sense, but when I was glazing and then lifting, you can actually see the color still because the color will stain your paper a little bit. So you can either use pure water or use a very transparent color. And I'm getting some nice granulization that's happening there. Mm -hmm. And again, you know, this, this is what's called a controlled quote unquote wash where you kind of uh, use gravity. So yeah, that granulation that is like texture, right? Yes, yep. Yeah, you can see cerulean blue with the Windsor Newton is yeah. really great for yeah, uh, getting that, that look. Okay. Looks like I'm getting something with the mix that I did with those rusty colors too. And you know, um, you can see that this is already, because the paper has buckled a little bit where I wet it, it's kind of pushing the pigment away. So the pigment's going out here. So you might want to layer in some more uh, color as you go. So I'm going to grab a little more blue. Mm -hmm. And here I'm not going to brush it much. I'm just going to kind of stipple it, just dab it, because I want a lot of pigment to be in there. <clears throat> and now you can move that around a little bit. If I get this water into there, it'll kind of pull things together. Now, a uh, word of caution, if you overdo this, you can get mud really quickly. <laughs> so see where the blue ran up in there? It can be interesting, but if you overwork this, you yeah. can get a real muddy looking uh -oh. painting. Uh-oh. So I'm going to let that kind of settle down, and uh, I think that that achieved what I was hoping for. Now, I can brighten this up more or darken it more later. I don't have to do that right now, but I kind of got this established. Uh, the way that I wanted it to be. So let's hop into the leaves next. And this will be fun because we get to do some sponge work. <laughs> so with your sponges, I've found over the years that natural sponges uh, just, they, they're more interesting, they're less uniform. Um, they'll give you interesting textures, so that's, that's what I use. And the way to use them is get it soaked completely. So let's just let this take a bath for a moment. And then while that's getting nice and well soaked, we want to mix up our color. So I'm going to use my palette. And what I want to do here is I really want to kind of get a rusty golden color first. And then later I'll come in with a brush. Um, or you could do the sponge again and get some darker spots. So I'm just going to go with a lot of cerulean or not cerulean, but quinacridone. Mm. So I'm going to take this golden color, mm. and I have to have enough of this on the palette so that I can pick it up with the sponge. 
-hmm. And let's go ahead and lay in some of this Venetian red. Mm -hmm. uh, I think, you know, that would be a, a good choice right there. If you wanted to add something like yellow ochre or browns, you can. Mm -hmm. But I think this will work pretty That's well. That's kind of like what our creamers were on the creaming picture, you know, but Oh yes, like the, yeah, it is. Mm -hmm. Okay, so once you've conditioned your sponge, just squeeze out most of the water, check it and see if you feel any really dry spots. And then what I do is I look at interesting parts of the sponge and you can fold it to create texture. Just um, play around with it and see, see what works. Mm -hmm. And I can tell right away that soaked that up right, right off the bat. I'll need more pigment on my palette. Mm -hmm. Uh, one word of caution, it's called wallpapering. It's if you hold the sponge the same angle all the time, it'll start to give a very uniform pattern. And, and unless that's what you're going for, just be aware of that, mm -hmm. that it'll look kind of uh, unnatural. Hmm. So those are leaves. Well, they're the start of them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we'll do some more, quite a bit more mm -hmm. here. So I'm adding more um, of the quinacridone gold, mm -hmm. and I'm just going to pick that up on my sponge. Wow. It's pretty wet, um, so what I might do is could squeeze you, like, out quite dab a bit it of water. With your, this? Could you dab it with your um, it soak in there too much? You could dab it with a paper towel, yeah. but it's this is going to give you more um, textures. More. No, I mean, could you dab that? You were looking for something to dab it. Uh, you mean to get the water out of it? Yeah. Uh, it's easy if you just turn it, you know, the other way oh. so that you're not squeezing the pigment out. You can just do oh. that. Okay. So now I'm just going to come back in. What's happening here is I don't have enough pigment in here, so I'm going to really grab some oh. paint. I see. Mm -hmm. So you will go through quite a bit of paint, but that's okay. So I'm trying to move the sponge. I'm trying also not to just make a, a real solid blob. I'm trying to kind of uh, lightly allow some white to be showing through here. Mm -hmm. And see, that's already making this more interesting, I think, than it was before. Mm -hmm. You do have to reload your sponge quite a bit, quite often. Does it dry on the sponge real fast? Is that what's happening? Uh, no, it'll, it'll stay wet quite a while. Mm -hmm. And then step back from your work and see what's happening. Yeah, see that? These little uh, details start to happen. <clears throat> it's sort of like the Bill Alexander and the Bob Ross thing where they'd use the palette knife and they'd say, you know, you just created a million little details just with one swipe of the, yeah. of the palette knife. So it's, it's true with the sponge, too. Okay, so now... Um, at this point, I want to darken this up a little bit, and we could use the sponge. Actually, let's do a little bit of that with the sponge. So I'm going to grab some it's really browns. really glowing right there. Yeah, that's that's what we want wow. is to get that glow yeah. in there. It looks like the sun is already there. So this is um, burnt umber, mm -hmm. nice rich brown. I'm going to add a little bit more of that Venetian red to that. Ooh, I grabbed opera. Well, that will really punch it up. Opera is that pink, mm -hmm. but mixed with the brown, it'll be great. Mm -hmm. And so let's get some darks in some of these areas. The The paint on the paper is still a little bit wet, so that, that isn't working really great. So let me show you another way to do it, is to just grab your brush and get in here and stipple. So you, you're not brushing at all. You're just... Oh, yeah dabbing and it's, it's wet on wet so the pigment that's on your brush will kind of interact with the wet sponge work that you just did. 
So that's going to help me to kind of uh, frame this corner. Now, I don't want a lot of darkness over here, but I can do a little. And so this is called stippling. Uh, you can stipple with pencil, colored pencil, paints, pastels. It's just where you're kind of dabbing in color. And I want to uh, keep or retain some of the blues, that very subtle blue up here. But I also kind of want to frame that corner. Uh, you can see in the reference photo, it's pretty dark up in there. So um, I'm going to grab some pure dark quinacridone gold and come back over the top of some of these areas. This has some brown in it too. I'm sure I put some Van Dyke brown or something, but I'm going to just glaze. This is glazing, even though it's uh, not thin. It's pretty strongly pigmented. It's just another layer, another coat over the top of those spots to get those darker. And um, while we're at it, just really quickly, let's grab a very small liner brush. That's a number one, nice and fine. So we'll grab that and get, get a few more branches in here. Oh, that makes some nice lines, doesn't it? Yeah, it, these are fantastic. Yeah. Is that the black velvet? Yeah, the silver black velvet is the brand. Wow. Okay, now that was wet and it bled, but it, you know, it's fine. And just be aware that that might happen. Could you dab at that with a, uh, a washcloth, uh, one of these, your paper towel, uh, where it kind of bled? You mean to lift it up? Yeah. Yeah. Lift. Yeah. You could definitely lift it if it was something you didn't want. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then to um, really emphasize this glow, all that I did there was lifting so and scrubbing. So I'm just going to take this stiff bristle brush. And I've already done a little bit here, but I'll do some more of this. See how that's already lifting that quinacridone gold? And then if you take your tissue, oh yeah, you can lift a lot of that out. And that might even be too much, probably is. But anyway, it's easy to, to lift. So I'm going to take a little bit more and just pull it back in a little. But I want this to really create that glow of the sunlight. Looks like I just undid what I <laughs> did. But you get the idea. <laughs> you have to kind of decide when you're finished and Yeah. You may come back to this too. You may, you may actually do this several times. But I, I also tried to use that very light effect on the branches that are around here, and it needs some more. So I'm just going to lay in a few, but with the very very light gold. And these are those little details that kind of start to pull your painting together. So that's that's kind of the the first step here. So for me, it was to shorten or um, kind of de-emphasize this area by cutting down the shoreline, and then to get some leaves happening here. Not thrilled with this side yet, but it's okay. You can uh, might be a little darker than I want, so I am going to lift this a little bit right now. That's twilight time coming, isn't it? Yeah, and you know, it yeah. is darker in the yeah. reference photo over there, too, because it, it is further away from your light source. But that's uh, that's kind of starting to get the glow that I want to have happening here. We haven't addressed the lower right corner much at all yet, uh, but we'll get to that later on. Okay. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Just to see what happens. Hmm. And I want... 
want it to be darker still, so I'm going to grab Ooh. some more of that Payne's Gray. Ooh. Instead of uh, cadmium yellow, I'm going to grab a little bit of yellow ochre, which is yeah, a little bit uh, darker. Yeah, I think I'm I'm happier with what I have so far. It's not finished, but it, it achieved what I was kind of wanting to change about my painting. I am seeing, you know, more of a glow back here. I might at some point kind of pull this landform, close up that gap just with a very, very light yellow. But um, yeah, that's kind of what I was hoping would happen. So it needs work, but it, it got me started. Well, don't you want to kind of leave that so their eye can... You could, yeah, or it could just Don't be very, very subtle. You know, it, oh. it could be so light that you barely see it. Mm -hmm. um, this is kind of a, you know, it's basically dealing with forms more than some specific element that you're yeah. trying to achieve, like a statue or a, you know, an architectural element. It's just, it's clumps of foliage, and so that's yeah. kind of what... I'm going to put leaves on that, too, though. Right, so that'll cover up that. In here, Sandy? Yeah. Yeah. Well, on, the, on your original, it's like you've got it's stippled. Yeah, I did yeah. a lot more work on that. Um, mm -hmm. Basically, what I did with that, my water's getting pretty muddy, but. You want me to go dump it? Um, I can go do that. Actually, <laughs> actually Kathleen, would you mind just taking the cap off of that and I'll just pour a little sure. bit of that? Okay, so um, what you could do to get that, and I haven't really talked about it yet. Well, I did a little bit over here. Is take quinacridone gold and mm -hmm. glaze with that. Yeah, just pour a little in there for me. Thank you. Yeah, see, by um, darkening that a little bit too, it's going to push that back. It, th that was part of the problem that I had going there that I'm wasn't happy with it. Mm -hmm. It was, mm -hmm. you know, it wasn't clear which part was further back or it, it wasn't as clear as it should have been. So that, that already helped. And then, like you said, you can <clears throat> try to create some textures in there. And that, that was the same technique that I was starting to do with the uh, leaves on the trees, just kind of dab in. Is that what you're going to do over there uh, with the rocks? I am going to, I'm not going to do any of the rocks in here. No, but, but I, I up. Yeah, you know, I'm going to kind of do it like the rest. It looks like it, it's yeah. textured. It's one of these kind of brushes, Kathleen, just a thin brush. Oh. And it'll have to be completely dry to get that. Oh, yeah. But yeah, we will get to that one. Uh-huh. Hmm. And this will diffuse because it's wet. So these uh, little dots will kind of blend in to the background. Let's get this reflection looking a little better too. I can just barely express how much I like quinacridone. <laughs> I'm not kidding. <laughs> it's, like it bails me out every it's, time. Uh, it's a good color. It's a great color, and yeah. it works so well. If you're trying to get a glow, uh -huh. you can't go wrong with quinacridone gold. It just does it. Uh huh. That's the so, trees. It's quite gold. Yeah, and you know, really, you can do. Um, I, I don't want to do it right now, but when this is when this completely dries, you can do that very same thing with some quinacridone gold, kind of around this glow, um, over the top of your leaves, and it'll just make it pop. So wow. you might give that a try. See how how that's glowing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let's do just a little bit here. You might have to come back with a sponge later or some brushwork to get the textures back in here, but this glow is going to be so worth it. And I'm kind of using a light touch with the brush. I'm moving the grip back quite a bit. It's not super wet, but you have to dilute the quinacridone gold a little or it'll look like a brown. Yeah. 
not really this. Hmm. And you know, then just step back from your work and squint your eyes and see see what's working and where it needs more work. What we used, we used the, you know those things on the door that you peek into? That mm -hmm. when you're going to knock on the door? You can buy those little things, they're about like that. And you look through the opposite end <laughs> and it makes things look far away. Oh, okay, yeah. So that, so uh, hop to it and I'll be around to check on you. And so we'll uh, do one more short demo for today. Um, so if you can get to a stopping point and join me up here, I'll share with you the textures to tie this together. I've got a little bloom happening right here. <laughs> yeah, nice touch, like a fish has jumped in and out of the water. <laughs> Okay, so we are kind of, uh, as a group, I think, really closing in on this painting. Um, while I've been, since the demo and while I've been uh, making the rounds around the, the room, what I've done is I've just sort of glazed in a little bit more of the gold around this glow, and I did lift a little bit more. The other thing that I did is I layered in some red, and it's really strong, um, but, you know, what I can either leave this or I can de-emphasize that a little bit. Uh, one way to make that work would be add a little more reddish tone to these trees up in here. Uh, but basically we were down to kind of a couple of things. Creating some, making sense out of this corner, which right now is just kind of a blob. And it, it has a suggestion of some uh, shadows happening, but I really haven't done much with that. So this area and then I want to get a little bit of texture just on this ground, especially over where it's closer to you on the left. And then basically just um, suggesting some tree trunks back in there. Um, so that's kind of where we are. Let me also point out just a couple of other things with, um, you know, really targeted lifting. I'm noticing this, this looks a little muddy. The whole thing looks a little muddy. So I want to kind of... Uh, punch up this little bit of highlight coming through the clouds back here. So what I'm doing is just scrubbing a little bit and that's that's what I did to get this uh, suggestion of the uh, shadow also. But you know just by doing some targeted lifting you can make quite a bit of difference in, in the uh, interest and the value of your painting. And so let me do a little bit of that same idea over here. I'm just going to lift some of this darker brown. Okay, so what I want to do right now is I want to get some quite a bit of texture and foliage over the top of this. So I've got a couple of uh, liner brushes. This is just a number four small and I think I have a number one. These are very tiny, but we'll do the trick. So I'm just going to get some dark browns. I'm going to take a bigger brush to uh, just mix these up. And so what I'm working with here, I've got burnt umber. Any kind of brown would work for this. If you want to really darken that, take something like Payne's Gray and mix it with your brown and it'll give you a really rich dark brown. Sepia would also do the same thing. Okay, so 
this is basically dry right now. Um, I can glaze this later with some quinacridone to get some golds in here, but I'm just going to get some foliage started here. <coughs> so I'm just kind of uh, loading my brush every few brush strokes. And I want to kind of bring this up over the water, over the light spots, occasionally. And kind of vary the value. So that, that was really dark. Um, that was mostly sepia. I'm going to grab some quinacridone gold that's not diluted and it's looks like a golden brown. And kind of vary the direction of these a little bit. And by getting these darker reeds on top of those background colors, it can kind of uh, layer your painting and create some depth. And then if you want to texture it a little bit, you can. Let's, uh... What color are you using? Uh, that's sepia. Sepia? Whoa, well, I went crazy. Spatter? Spatter with it. Yeah. Uh, don't splatter as much as I did. Though. Oh, okay. <laughs> Go easy on this. Go easy on the splatter. Yeah. Nothing that little bit they can't do. Right. Yeah. <laughs> See, got birds in the air. Yeah, <laughs> yeah <there you> go. <laughs> exactly. Oh, that works. Birds. That does work. Yeah, that yeah, does. That's a big bird right there. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see, the branches are going to expand up here, I think. That's very cool. Mm -hmm. So now um, I want some texture over here, and on the. Uh, this reference painting, I used a detailed brush. I used a really small one. You don't have to do it this way. You could use a sponge. Um, there's a lot of different ways. But what I, what I basically did was I tried to get in here and sort of pull a uh, stippling dot just to create some textures. And I think I had more of a green on that reference photo. So let me mix up a green. I'm using um, indigo and a little bit of this uh, yellow ochre. It's not dark enough, so I'm going to grab a little bit of Payne's Gray. But anyway, all I'm doing here is just um, stippling, making a, a dot that's kind of pulled a little bit just to create some texture. <coughs> so this is just one option for texturing this ground, but I wanted, I didn't want it to look so flat. Sponge would be quicker. Um, but I kind of like the variety of textures, you know, when you get some, mm -hmm. it takes time and it, it is uh, tedious somewhat, but it does create an interesting uh, additional texture to your painting. So I'm kind of diluting it as I move out so that it's going to get lighter as it moves towards that light source and my little mistake I can stipple right over it there with the blob and then you know always step back from your work and see if it's what you want 
Um, I kind of want to make the uh, the line between the trees and the grass a little darker, a little more definite. So I'm using um, some sepia mixed with, a, I'm going to try a little bit of Payne's Gray with that and it should be a nice dark color. So I'm going to sort of uh, get in here and kind of darken the undergrowth along the edge here and then pull in some lines just to suggest some trunks. And this is optional <coughs> if you don't want to do this, that's fine. And then again, as I work towards the light source here, I just want it to be lighter and more subtle. I'm going to uh, soften this in here a little bit. I'm going to take a rusty color. So I've got some browns and reds here. And I'm again just kind of stippling this, sort of trying to get that line of darkness on the trees that kind of separates it from the, the ground here. What color are you using there? Um, it's a mix. I've got a brown, uh, mm -hmm. Kathleen, probably something like that burnt umber, and then a little bit of the uh, sepia. Mm -hmm. Any dark, uh, earthy color would be mm -hmm. fine. Mm -hmm. And I'll, I'll repeat that color down here a little bit to try to tone down this red. If you wanted, you could reflect a little bit of the suggestion of tree trunks in the water. That's up to you. I want this to be just a little bit darker. Wow, that wind is really picking up. Yeah, and this, and this roofing here always sounds like the building's lifting off. <laughs> So again, just with uh, sepia here, I'm just doing more of the reeds. Mm -hmm. <coughs> and I would just kind of keep building it up so it's pretty dark in this lower right corner. And then figure out where you want to sign your painting and go back and if you have any little speckles that you accidentally splashed all over the sky, tidy those up. Um, get your your signature in there. There you go. And call it. Call, call it, it. Call it. We're, we're done for today. <laughs>